Today, we're going to take a look at the latest movie in the seemingly never-ending Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, Dead Men Tell No Tales, directed by Joaquin Running and Esben Sandberg. Brenton Thwaites plays Henry Turner, the now-grown-up son of Will Turner, who is trying to free his father from the curse of the Flying Dutchman. He teams up with Karina Smith, played by Kaya Scodelario, an astronomer and horologist who knows the location of the mythical Trident of Poseidon, a magical MacGuffin that can break all curses. And of course, they inevitably run into Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow, who is on the run from a group of undead pirate hunters led by Captain Salazar, played by Javier Bardem. This movie is kind of a mess. I didn't really hate it but I didn't think it was all that great either. I think it was better than the last movie, but that's not really saying much. It's certainly not as good as the original trilogy. And really, At World's End is probably where this series should have ended. There is very little about this movie that feels fresh or new in any way. It's basically just a collection of recycled ideas from the other movies. And I don't mean it's recycling a formula that the other films used. No, it's recycling actual plot points. There's a ship with an undead crew, and said undead crew is chasing our heroes, along with the Royal Navy. There's a search for an island that cannot be found on any map, with a magical treasure that can break a curse. Does any of this sound familiar? And they aren't even trying to hide the fact that Henry and Karina are meant to be the new Will and Elizabeth. Although they're in the movie as well. And Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow is kinda getting old at this point. In fact, he seemed unusually annoying in this movie compared to his previous films. And I don't know if he's to blame for this or if it's more the director's fault, but I think they put a little bit too much focus on Jack Sparrow being drunk because he spends pretty much the entire movie just badly slurring his words to the point where I couldn't even understand him half the time. And this movie gives no fucks whatsoever about continuity. I mean, the very premise of Henry wanting to save his father from the curse of the Flying Dutchman doesn't make any sense because it's not really a curse per se, it's a job. A job that he volunteered for, a very important job, because he's ferrying souls to the afterlife. If he's freed from that, what happens to the souls of the dead? Do they just stay where they are? Someone else going to come along and take them to the afterlife? What happens? Don't know. They don't even bother to explain that. Granted, Will didn't exactly have a lot of options when he took the job, because the only other option was dying. But still, calling it a curse is a bit of a stretch. And the opening scene shows a younger Henry swimming down to the bottom of the sea to try to find the Dutchman, which he does, and he finds his father as well, and both Will and the Dutchman are looking a bit monstrous. Will's face is covered in barnacles and everything. He's starting to look a lot like the crew of the Dutchman and Dead Man's Chest, which completely contradicts the end of At World's End. Did they even watch the previous movies? This movie also tells a story of how Jack got his compass, which completely contradicts the story we heard in Dead Man's Chest. And somehow in this movie, Jack has this weird idea of his crew paying tribute to them, which he apparently got the idea for way back when he first became Captain of the Black Pearl, something like 30 years ago, or however long it was. The timeline's not very clear, but in any case, this has never come up before until now. So did he just forget about this for 30 years and suddenly popped back into his head? Actually, now that I think about it, the man is fucking nuts. I can almost buy that. And there's some stuff in this movie that doesn't make a whole lot of sense or isn't very well explained. Like the curse that was placed upon Salazar and his men is apparently tied to Jack's compass somehow because if Jack betrays his compass, it will apparently unleash his greatest fear. And for some reason, his greatest fear is Salazar and his buddies escaping their prison and coming after him, even though he really has no reason to suspect that would even be possible. And betraying the compass means giving it away, which he's done several times before, I think, and Salazar never got out of his prison, so... Hmm? Also, Salazar knows that Jack's compass is tied to his imprisonment. How the fuck could he possibly know that? And then there's Karina. Karina 
is accused by the good people of Jamaica for being a witch because she knows astronomy. A woman with a functioning brain who actually wants to learn things? Burn the witch! Seriously, that's how it goes. Just a bit on the nose, maybe? And the really dumb thing is, there are actual witches in this universe. We've seen them in other movies, and they obviously look like witches. They're not shy about it. They're not trying to hide it. So someone that looks normal, probably not a witch. In fact, there's a witch in Dead Men Tell No Tales. And she does not look normal. Shaved head, body covered in runes, like... This is obviously a witch. And yet that particular witch is in no danger whatsoever of being executed, and in fact is briefly shown working with the Royal Navy. What the fuck? There are a few more questionable choices they made in this movie, like explaining the origin of Jack Sparrow's name. Because it's apparently not his given name, it is an assumed name that he picked up at some point, and... Were people really asking for this? Did we need an explanation for why he's called Jack Sparrow? I don't think we did. And we meet another one of his relatives, played by Paul fucking McCartney of all people. I'm not sure why. Considering his dad was played by Keith Richards, I would think Mick Jagger would make more sense, but maybe Jagger was busy. I don't know. There's also a very weird reveal involving Captain Barbosa, which I'm not going to spoil, but... Much like the giving tribute thing, this is something that somehow never came up in the past 30 years until just now, not even hinting at it or anything. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, there is some good stuff in this movie. Javier Bardem, for example, is still awesome, and I really liked him as Salazar. He was over the top in all the best ways. Scodelario was very good as Karina. Jeffrey Rush is still great as Barbosa. Brenton Thwaites was... okay, but I found his character to be a bit bland. Although, considering whose son he's supposed to be playing, I guess that's kind of perfect. The movie looks fantastic. I can believe this thing cost $230 million to make. And the big bank robbery at the beginning of the movie was a lot of fun. Because they don't just rob, like, the money inside the bank. No, they end up robbing the entire bank. By accident, really. It's completely ridiculous, but it's an enjoyable sort of ridiculous, and I loved it. And some of the comedic moments were genuinely funny, although some were kind of stupid, like when Karina explains she's an astronomer and one of the pirates thinks that means she studies donkeys. It took me a while to figure that one out, and finally it hit me, oh, because the word astronomer starts with ass. Astronomer. Bit of a stretch. But the movie's good points don't quite make up for it being such a convoluted mess. So the best recommendation I can give for this is wait for rental. There is a post credit scene which teases a sixth movie and also appears to give no fucks for continuity. But I'm wondering if the sixth movie is really going to happen because the movie has been doing okay, especially in the foreign box office. That's really what's saving this movie right now, because domestically, it's not doing all that great. It's not exactly bombing, and it probably won't, but I'm thinking it will underperform, because it cost $230 million to make, and reportedly another $170 million was spent on marketing, and that's $400 million total. And its total worldwide opening weekend was about two eighty five dollars last I checked. It'll probably still make enough money at the box office that it will turn a small profit, but it's probably going to underperform. So if we do get a sixth movie, I expect the budget will be slashed big time. And I guess that's about all I have to say about Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. God, that's a long title. Till next time, take care.